Sophia and Shane finally take the big step in their relationship, though extremely carefully, since Sophia is yet to get that hernia operation. After their semi-successful night together, Shane has to leave for a tour for several months, but instead of seeing him off, Sophia obsesses over the latest item of clothing she put up in her store. Nobody has bid on the gun sacks dresses, which Sophia thinks are soon going to be the next big thing. Shane reminds her that he is going away for a lot of months, and Sophia gets up to see him off. She promises to visit him at his shows the second she gets her hernia taken care of, which would be very soon, because she is going to get her insurance card. While they are talking, Shane calls Sophia his girlfriend, to which the girl does not react, and simply changes the topic. Shane calls her out on changing the subject. He only wants to set boundaries for himself, so he is not tempted to cheat on the tour. Sophia reminds him how she likes to keep things casual, but Shane kisses her as she mumbles. Sophia finds her insurance card in the mail, and she is over the top. At the art academy, Rick, the security manager, is talking to Nathan. Sophia arrives and shows her boss the insurance card she has. She is going to quit her job and get on with her business full-time. Sophia will not spend an extra second in this brainwash factory industry when she could be using those seconds to make her dream come true. Her words inspire Nathan. He needs to get out of this academy and take a leap toward his true self. He hands over his expired ID to Rick and hauls out of there, thanking Sophia for inspiring the artist in him. Sophia checks the nasty gal vintage store and finds that there are still zero bids on her dress. She expresses her concerns to Annie, but Annie does not have much faith in the gun sacks dresses. Sophia is adamant that those dresses are going to be in style very soon, and she knows this because she is never wrong. Dax, who is an audience to this conversation, tells Sophia about what he learned in business school. You can't tell the market what it wants, the market tells you. But Sophia is just overconfident enough about her choices to not pay heed to his advice. Besides, those business tips may have worked for others. But what she has is not just a business, but her personal passion. Dax still continues to give her cautionary advice about how 95% of companies fail in the first five years. Sophia is worried about that. She likes those odds because she knows she will be in the 5% that makes it. Annie is fully supportive of her best friend, but Dax still warns her. If she is going to play the prediction game, she better be right, or her business is going to go belly up. Back at home, Sophia opens her fully stocked fridge and munches on baby carrots. While she holds the insurance card in her hand, Sophia mulls over Dax's advice. Her dresses have still not had a single bid. It is Sophia's last day at work, and Rick comes to bid her adieu. He even has a goodbye cupcake for her, and he has penned down the words he could not say to her face in a letter. But Sophia has thought about some stuff, and now she is not quitting. Rick takes the letter back, it is better that way. He wonders what made her change her mind. Sophia thinks it is a smarter play not to make any big moves just yet. She is at Annie's workplace, getting free makeup and someone on one time with her bestie. Annie reminds her that Sophia was supposed to quit her job at the art academy as soon as she got her insurance card. But Sophia has thought about it long and hard, and she is panicked. The statistics for people getting hernia surgery are terrifying. 5% of people die from it, and Sophia is worried she is not going to make that cut. She does not like the odds she has of surviving without a steady job, and she likes how it feels to have a stocked fridge, and not have to rummage through the garbage for food. Sophia wants to have enough money to drink Starbucks, and only a steady job will make that happen, and it will help her support her hobby. Annie does not think that Sophia's passion can be reduced to a hobby, but Sophia is riding the financially stable high. Days pass by, and Sophia stays put at her job, drinking Starbucks, and working on her business on the side. But day after day, Sophia remains disappointed when she opens her store and finds that the dress still hasn't sold. Not a single bid was placed. She changes the price and lowers it over and over again. Time keeps running out, and Sophia keeps putting the dresses for sale again and again, but the results are always disappointing. Aggravated, Sophia kicks all her stuff and screams frustratedly. She looks at herself in the mirror, and self-doubt makes her curse herself for being a failure and having no creativity or vision. Enraged, Sophia smashes her fist into the wall, and then the pain from her hernia acts up, taking her down. Sophia ends up in the hospital, and while subdued, she is worried she might die. The operation is successful, and Sophia wakes up, still loopy from the drugs. She finds her dad next to her. She is happy to see the old man, and is just loopy enough not to care about anything. Her father takes her home and lays Sophia down on the bed. He looks at her with sad eyes, and that makes Sophia sad. She assures him that she will be fine, she likes her life, and he does not have to be worried about her. But that does not take away her dad's worries. If anything, seeing her messed up room and Sophia's equally messed up life makes him reminisce about the old days of her childhood. He recalls how Sophia was outcasted by all the other kids for being different from the rest, but it never ever broke her spirits. He remembers one time when they were living in Indiana and Sophia was eight years old. She wanted to play with the neighborhood kids, but they would not let her. But unlike any other girl, Sophia did not cry over it. Instead, she picked up a red string and started running around with it, telling other kids how the string had a kite attached to it, with fireworks and a rainbow tail. 
It was not too long before all the kids wanted to play with her. He recalls being proud and thinking that his Sophia had the potential to do whatever she wanted to do, to be the best. But sadly, he thinks she lost her way somewhere and gave up on herself. And he did too. When Sophia wakes up, Annie is by her bedside, because her dad had to go to work. Sophia is filled with renewed hope. Her brush with death taught her one thing, and that is to leave her job and focus on her business. Annie approves of that decision. No matter how many gun sacks she does not sell, she is never going to give up. But she needs to weigh until she is healed and well again. Later, when she is recovered from her surgery, Sophia returns to work. Poor Rick tries to confess his feelings for her, but Sophia politely shuts that down. She hands in her resignation and takes back the reins of her life. Even as she winds up her failed gun sacks dresses, Sophia still has hope. 